The COVID-19 pandemic that began in the United States in early 2020 has resulted in a dramatic rise in the volume of hate crimes against Asian Americans. Negative bias and microaggressions against Asian Americans have also risen during the pandemic. COVID-19 was directly linked to China, not just in terms of the origins of the disease, but also in the coverage of it by politicians and news media, sometimes very irresponsibly. Because Asian Americans have historically been portrayed by the mainstream as perpetually foreign, no matter how long they have lived in the United States, some social scientists believe it has been relatively easy for non-Asian Americans to treat those of Asian descent as foreign and scapegoat them for the pandemic. The Film Lab collected stories from all racial groups about their experiences with anti-Asian bias during the pandemic, whether as victims, witnesses, or even perpetrators. We share a few with you here, interspersed with moments of original entertainment content based on the stories. At the end of the show, there will be a period of silence during which we invite you to take a moment of reflection and to share your comments, thoughts, and insights. Asian Americans make up over 17% of America's doctors. They are also nurses, scientists, and police officers. Anti-Asian racism, based on misinformation about COVID-19, isn't just dangerous for Asian Americans, it's dangerous for all Americans. Racism is a virus. I went to get my bubble tea and I came out. A man hit me. He hit me. He yelled chink. My bubble tea flew from my hand. Plastic shards, bubbles, tea, tapioca pearls everywhere. On my clothes, my hands, my face, the ground. My glasses were dripping. People were laughing. I could not stop the tears, hard and fast and hot. Helpless, humiliated, blinded. I just wish one person would have asked me if I was okay. I'm a Texan and Asian American. Post COVID, the guys where I work started making Kung Fu sounds every time I walk by. I just ignore them. What, what am I gonna do, fight them? No, thanks. They want to rise out of you so they can excuse fucking you up. Don't give it to them. I serve on the board of a condominium and I'm the only person of Asian descent. After COVID, one of the board member's spouses said there were too many Asians in the building and something needed to be done. When I spoke up, I was ostracized and cut out of meetings. They had a secret vote and ousted me and put a white male in my place. My advice to someone in a similar situation is get yourself a lawyer and sue. Where's your mask, China man? Oh, uh, it's on my face. China virus, Wuhan virus, China people virus. Yeah, it's actually called COVID-19. It's a coronavirus and- Go back to China! I'm actually from Detroit. I saw them refuse to let an Asian lady swim next to me, a white woman, at our community pool. The lifeguard actually said she might give people COVID and kicked her out of her usual lap lane. Well, I marched myself right to the manager's office with her, hand in hand, and we complained together and I said I have no problem with her swimming next to me. The manager said I was very kind, but that she was the one causing the disturbance by complaining and that she'd be banned from the pool if she bothered him again. It's outrageous! <sighs> How can they do this? This isn't Birmingham in 1960. This is New York City in 2020. What happened to us? As I cross the street to my home block, out of nowhere I get shoved back to the curb with a sidewalk. The woman who shoved me groaned, Hey, chink, no one is leaving me alone. 
Normally, when someone physically assaults me for my race, they say something aggressive and or something about the spread of COVID being my fault. But this woman looked anxious and like she wanted to enjoy the slice of cheese pizza waiting in her lap. She also looked like she needed a place to stay and clean up. So I calmly asked her, what's wrong? Is there something I could help with? And she immediately spits back, the police are ignoring me. I told her I could call them again and she told me she had already tried. I told her I would help, so I ran a few yards away to the doorman of my building and asked him to call the cops after telling him what happened. He was eager to help, but fortunately, the cops were already on their way. I suppose hurt people hurt people. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Actually, no. You know what? Wendy down on 17 just yeah. called me a chink. No. Yes! I thought you were Japanese. That's so rude. I'm sorry she did that. That's horrible. Oh my god. It's, it's coming. I live in a red state and I get a lot of microaggressions. I was in the grocery store and this white woman ran up to me holding two containers of rice and asked me in this loud, demanding tone, which one of these is better for sushi? I was like, I have no idea, lady. I'm not even Japanese. Afterwards, I was like, damn it. I should have recommended Uncle Ben's. Because it don't stick. <laughs> That's my 2020 hindsight on that one. Cross-racial coalitions are essential to fighting bias and discrimination. We need to show zero tolerance to racism of any kind, whether against Asians or other disenfranchised groups. Not in our town, niot.org, for example, has a helpful website with constructive advice for victims, bystanders, community groups, and even elected officials, which is well worth a read. This fight is for all of us, for our humanity, our pride, and our respect of the self, of others, of our country. Basic steps for everyone include checking in with those potentially experiencing discrimination and simply saying, are you okay? Can I help? Making your support visible, whether on social media or your clothing or a bumper sticker. Speaking up if you witness a hate crime or microaggression and reporting attacks, and even simply learning. Learning the actual history of this country from which so many non-white people have been erased. I just wish one person would have asked me if I was okay.